What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna give you seven tips to start crushing small stakes poker games. Let's jump right into it. All right guys, so I've had a lot of experience playing small stakes poker over the years. I've played over 10 million hands of poker. I have coached hundreds of students in these games. So I've gotten to see firsthand what holds a lot of people back. So today I'm gonna give you my top seven tips that I wish I knew before I started playing poker. They're going to get you much better results in small stakes games. I'm also gonna run you through several hand history examples to help show you the strategies that I'm gonna teach you today. And I'm also going to include charts on your screen showing you what hands to play and so on. All right, let's jump into it. Here we go. Tip number one is to use a proven pre-flop strategy. So guys, everything starts before the flop in poker. You need to know what hands to play. So the first thing that I always suggest to beginners is to study some good pre-flop starting hand charts depending on which poker game type you play, six players or nine players. And luckily there are tons of totally free, good pre-flop charts these days, which will show you exactly which hands to play from every single seat at the poker table. I'm gonna put some images on your screen right now to give you an example of what kind of hands that I suggest in six max and nine max. And I also include these charts and more for Zoom tournaments and so on in my free poker cheat sheet, which will be the top link in the description below. You can download it for free and study the charts for yourselves. The next thing you need to know is the bet sizing for preflop. Again, just like which hands to play, this should be something that is totally automatic that you don't have to think about in the heat of the moment when you're playing poker. So for example, when you RFI, which stands for raise first in, you should know that in most online poker games, I would recommend these days coming in for a 2.5x raise. The X refers to the big blind. So for example, if you're playing in a $1, $2 cash cam, 2.5x raise would be to $5. Now, as always, when I give betting and raising rules of thumb, I need to point out a very, very significant caveat. If you play live poker, for example, or home games, where you're playing in very loose games where people love to call a lot, you need to adjust these bet sizing, sometimes upwards quite a bit, depending depending on the people who are at your table. Your goal of the preflop raise or re-raise, which I'm gonna talk about in just a sec here, is to narrow the field typically down to one or two callers at the most, or just get everyone to fold. That's okay as well. If you're getting five callers when you're raising it to $5 in a $1, $2 cash game, that means you're not making it enough. Bump it up. And the same thing goes with three betting. Three betting is just when you re-raise pre-flop. My three betting rules are 3x when you're in position, meaning you're going to get to act last on the flop turn and river. Massive proven statistical advantage in poker so we make it a little bit less when we're going to be in position and of course when we're going to be out of position we want to make it 4x give them a bit more reason to fold pre-flop because we know we're going to be at a massive statistical disadvantage on the flop turn and river once again if you don't understand these basic sort of fundamentals i would highly suggest just studying my free poker cheat sheet again top link in the description below let's move on to tip number two and that of course is to use a proven winning flop strategy so you should be c betting most flops regardless of your hand a c bet in poker is called a continuation bet it is when you are continuing the aggression that you would already built pre-flop most of the time we're going to be raising preflop coming in for the betting lead we will be calling from time to time but most of the time we're going to have the betting lead coming into the flop because that's going to give us more ways to win the pot so you want to use a consistent bet sizing versus the regulars now there's five different poker player types which you need to know i made a video just last week talking about them by the way make sure you subscribe so you never miss my new videos here on youtube but versus the regular that is the knit tag and lag tag stands for tight and aggressive lag stands for loose and aggressive you want to be betting a consistent amount typically about 50 percent 
on the flop. Once again, we're gonna be betting most of the time, even when we miss the flop. And versus the fish, you want to use a staggered bet sizing amount. I've talked about this in all of my books. This is one of the biggest areas where a lot of people go wrong is they use a consistent bet sizing versus both the regulars and the recreational players, AKA the fish. And this is simply not an optimal approach in small stakes games because recreational players love to call if they hit anything. So why would you only bet 50% when they're willing to call, for example, 80%? And of course, when you don't have anything, when you just have air, when you just have a bluff, you want to make it a lower amount as well. Because once again, we're talking about non-serious players, the recreational players. So for example, you raise up ace, jack of hearts, a fish, one of the recreational players calls you, flop comes down with an ace of clubs, nine of diamonds, and five of diamonds. Awesome spot, we nailed top pair. Let's say the pot's $50. You should bet $40 here. You don't want to be betting $25 here. So what a lot of people are teaching these days, and it really, it holds a lot of people back. You want to be staggering your bet sizing versus the recreational players, but versus a regular in this situation, if we were up against one of those tight aggressive players, for example, I would just be betting $25 in this situation. Let's move on to small stakes poker tip number three, which is giving up on the turn and river. Now, this is probably not going to be the most popular tip on this this list but you clicked on this video because you want to learn how to win at small stakes so let's break it all down number one thing we need to know about small stakes players they absolutely hate to fold and they love to call so what does this all mean it means that trying to run big bluffs against players in small stakes games is an excellent way to light money on fire. If you like to hand away all your chips, all your money, run big bluffs a lot in small stakes games. Obviously, that's not gonna be a winning strategy for us. So guys, unfortunately, the cold hard truth that again, a lot of people don't teach these days is that when you have absolutely nothing on the turn or the river, often the best strategy in small stakes games is just to give up. I know it's not sexy, it's not fun, it sucks. Again, you clicked on this video because you want to know how to win and that's why I'm giving you the real cold hard truth in this video from my 10 million hands of experience about how you actually win in these games. And I'm gonna have a little bit more to say about this coming up about why there is so much incorrect advice being offered these days. But moving on to point number four is to punish them on the turn in the river. This is the exact opposite of what we just talked about because the beautiful thing about poker is where there is a yang, there is always a yang. If they're gonna call a lot, then that means they are opening the door for us to punish them when we have it. So when you have a big hand on the turn in the river, it's not gonna happen very often, but when it does happen, you want to make them pay big time. And that includes both the fish, recreational players, and the regulars. And that includes on scare cards and equity cards. Now I don't have time in this short video to break down exactly what I mean by scare cards and equity cards, but I'm gonna give you an example here in a second. But if you want a ton more detail. I have 50 plus videos, 17 hours of advanced training in my brand new Elite Poker Training University. You can enroll right now. There'll be a link in the description below. Dozens and dozens of cheat sheets, over 200 example hands walking you step by step through how to beat every single player type in small stakes games. But let's give you another example here. You have Ace Five of Diamonds versus one of these nitty regulars. Now a nit, as I discuss in detail in my Elite Poker Training University, is the tightest player at the table. They are also the most passive player at the table. This is the player who you rarely see play a hand and when they do, look out. And lastly, this is the best player at the table to bluff. And again, there are dozens of examples in my new training course talking about that. But anyways, you raise it up, a nit calls, and the flop came with the seven of diamonds, queen of clubs and jack of spades. So once again, we're going to be continuation betting on this board most of the time. We're gonna assume the nit calls and the turn comes with the king of diamonds. So this is an excellent scare card and an excellent equity card. It is going to make it very difficult for this player to call with a hand like a queen or a jack. Once again, we're up against the perfect player type who is risk averse and likes to lay their hand down a lot. And also the king of diamonds not only scares a lot of other lower pairs on this board, but it also gives us improved equity. We have four to the flush now. If it came with a diamond on the river, we'd have the best hand. And we also picked up a gut shot to the Broadway 
straight. We would also make the best hand. So this is a slam dunk situation where you want to be double barreling on the turn and betting big, by the way, I'm talking 80% of the pot because we have massive equity and we want to push them out of the pot. Let's move on to point number five to beat small stakes poker games. That is guys to simply pick the right games. I have talked about this game endlessly here on the channel. This is another big sort of bone of contention that I have with a lot of poker training and coaches these days is they don't talk about this at all. Guys, is the number one most important thing in poker is who you're playing against. If you choose to play against other world-class professionals all the time, you're probably not gonna get very good results unless you happen to be a world-class professional yourself. But even in that case, you're trying to beat the best. There's no point in doing that. You know, not a very intelligent way to approach the game of poker if making a big profit is our end goal. No, of course, we want to be playing against the weaker players, the recreational players, the fish. And what a lot of people don't know these days is that not all small stakes games are created equally. The environment in poker has changed a lot over the last 10, 15 years in particular, and there's not as much easy money out there these days. It is very easy, even in small stakes games, to sit down these days and not find a bad player. So it is absolutely your job as a winning small stakes poker player to take your game selection very seriously to pick the right games. So I have what I call the 40% rule, and that is that there is at least one player at all times at every single poker table you ever play that is playing at least 40% or more of their hands. Now, if you play online poker, this is super simple. You just use a program like Poker Tracker, which I'll have links for in the description below, and it literally literally puts it right on your screen, the percentage of hands that people are playing. It's called their VPIP. It's a fancy term in Poker Tracker. It couldn't be any more obvious about who is the mark, the recreational player at your table. Now, if you're playing live poker, if you're playing on an online poker site that does not allow HUDs, that doesn't mean you can't still table select. So in this situation, you use your observational skills. You look for players that are playing too many hands, likely 40% or more of all hands that are dealt to them. They're called with a lot of bad hands after the flop. They're making ridiculously small bets. They're showing down bad hands. All of the clear signs of recreational players. And ideally you wanna have position, by the way, on these players. And that means having a seat to their left. Now I don't have the time in this short video to break that down further, but guys, the bottom line is you want to have bad players in your games and ideally to have position on them as well. This more than anything is going to skyrocket your winning and small stakes games. Guys, honestly, you can throw 90% of the strategy out the window. If you're not playing consistently against the weaker players where the money comes from in this game, again, all the strategy in the world is all for naught because you're simply not playing against the players who make the large fundamental mistakes. Let's move on to tip number six to beat small stakes poker games, and that is to ditch the fancy play syndrome. Guys, from having coached hundreds of students at these stakes, I can tell you this is one of the the biggest things that holds people back. And my first recommendation would be to simply stop listening to all these high stakes pros or trying to emulate them. This is one of the biggest reasons why people try to make all these fancy plays which simply do not work in small stakes games because what you guys need to know is that the strategy to beat your opponents in a $1, $2 cash game is literally universes away from the strategy that a high stakes pro uses to beat someone in a $500, $1,000 blind game. In your small stakes games, you're talking about playing against recreational players, relative beginners, weekend warriors, who largely just play the game for fun. They don't play this game at an elite world-class level, and therefore your fancy plays, your river check raise bluffs are just gonna go whoop right over their head, and they're just gonna call you down, and you're gonna get even more frustrated and wondering why you can't can't win. Guys, I say it all the time in these videos, on my blog, in my books, please just make the most painfully obvious play in small stakes games and you will win much, much more. This is often not what a lot of people want to hear, but again, I'm giving you the straight truth in this video. Guys, real success in small stakes games is not fun. It's not sexy. It's 
not about your 10th level thinking and your super high level GTO strategy that you learn from some high stakes pro. Real success in low stakes games is just employing a simple discipline strategy again and again and again and letting them overthink the situation. Just make the most painfully obvious play guys in small stakes games. Get the fancy play out of your game. You're going to have a lot more success in these games. And my final tip for you to start crushing small stakes poker games is to end your devastating tilt problem once and for all. So guys, besides the game selection that I already talked about before, not playing in good poker games, this is definitely the other one that holds the majority of people back in small stakes games is simply that when adversity strikes, when they get a certain amount of bad beats in a row, a switch goes off in their head and they start getting frustrated. They start going on tilt. They start making bad plays. They start playing hands that they shouldn't be playing. They start making poor bluffs that don't tell a believable story. As I've talked about in multiple videos on this channel before, I have tons of bluffing videos you can check out. They start making hopeless calls that don't make any sense as well and so on and so forth and throwing away more and more of their money so that when they finally do hit that good run of cards and they start making that profit, it's all for naught because they've thrown away all that money in the past and they can never get out of that hole that they dug for themselves. Guys, you have to challenge yourself to be better than that. We know that 90% of players, 95% of players in small stakes games these days, they're going to fly off the handle. You know, they get their aces cracked three times in a row and they're ready to claim that the whole site is rigged against them. Woe is me. My luck is so bad. So on and so forth. We've heard it all a million times. Guys, as somebody like yourself who is watching a video like this, who takes the game seriously, you have to be better than that. You have to challenge yourself to simply react better in the moment. Now, I've talked about many times in this video how taking a professional approach to this game is the way that I have used to have the most success in this game. I take a 24-7 approach to this game. That includes regular exercise, optimized diet, optimized sleep schedule, optimized meditation. I'm not saying you need to do all these things, guys, but you need to prepare yourself to be in peak mental state when you choose to sit down in a small stakes poker game because you need to understand, guys, that you're going to take an endless amount of bad beats against all of the bad players in this game. As I always said, you can't have the super high win rate that you can have in small stakes games without having the bad players as well. The super high win rate is built off all of their loose calls, all of their large fundamental mistakes, and they're going to get lucky sometimes, guys. We have to make peace with this. But the best news that I can bring to you is that if you can learn to master the mental side of the game of poker, you can go very, very far in this game. I've talked about this many times before, that most of the best poker players in the world actually aren't technically the most proficient. Where they dominate is in their mental toughness and their emotional stability when they get a string of bad beats or coolers or so-called setups in a row, they don't allow themselves to get obsessed by the short-term bad luck. They understand that poker is a long-term game and if they keep employing a solid strategy over the long run and don't go on tilt, they will win big. So guys, try out these seven tips for yourself in small stakes poker games and let me know in the comments below how they help you progress in your games. Also like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And lastly, once again, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope some of these tips help you out in your small stakes poker games. I will catch you next time. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.